every one of us created there is a purpose i mean god did not just create us to fill up space on this earth my name is ebo noadusum and today on green room special for global singles conference i will be joined by one day of quadro and <laughs> Now, yeah, welcome to the news at 10. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Wonderful, thank you. Great, great. Thank you. great. So, I mean, today's topic is purpose, career, ministry, and the theme is live out loud. <laughs> so, we're going to be breaking all of these things down and also related to you know living out loud as singles, as Christian singles, basically. So, before we proceed, I would like us to you know break these things into um. Sorry, before we proceed, I would like for us to properly explain these things in detail so that for people who are watching, they would understand what we're driving at and all that. Mm. So, so I'm going to be starting with one day. And <laughs> she's already looking at me like, don't start with me. <laughs> <laughs> so one day to you, what does purpose mean? Okay, um, I think thinking about purpose in terms of the normal meaning of purpose, mm -hmm. it's all about the reason for something, yeah. um, the why behind it. And thinking about purpose as a person, I think it's understanding the reason for your existence, understanding what you're supposed to be doing with your life, um, knowing that you didn't just happen by chance hmm. and that there are specific things that you're supposed to accomplish, there's a part that you need to play, you know, in the world. Hmm. Yeah. That's purpose to you. What does purpose mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's just like she said, it's the intention, you know, behind why we're here. You hmm. know, we believe that, you know, there is someone somewhere we like to call him God, who is behind, you know, who has a big plan and we have smaller parts of it. So mm -hmm. the our assigned role and what he has you know given to us to do is what I could call our purpose. Great, fantastic responses from the both of you. So would you say that you are walking in line with God's purpose for your life? Can you say it boldly that hmm, yes I am? Hmm. Um, and if yes, why would you say that? Okay, I think that's a an interesting question, but you know, in answering that, I would first say that, you know, purpose is not, I don't think that purpose is about, you know, that one thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's about a journey. It's about at every point in time, every season, you know, you're where you're supposed to be. You're doing what you're supposed to do, right? And so in thinking about my purpose right now, I think that it's just good to understand, you know, what is the big picture for my life and what is the what is what what am I supposed to be doing right now? You know, right now in the phase of life that, that I'm in, I'm involved in work, I'm involved in, you know, social good projects, you know, I'm involved in church. So in terms of, you know, playing the part that I can play, using my gift, using my time, my resources in those different areas, you know, I would say that I'm walking in purpose for now. It could come that sometime later in the year, I begin to feel like I should do something else. So are you trying should... to say that your purpose can change? Or <laughs> at it, some point? You know, <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I would say maybe not change, like completely different. I think everyone starts off, for instance, you have a mobile phone, right? A phone can make calls, send text messages. You can have different types of apps on it. Yeah. There are certain kinds of activities that a phone can do. You can use a phone, for instance, to wash like to clean the table, right? Although there are different things that the phone can do, but they are all similar. So I think that purpose is kind of like that. And I also think that the more you use the phone, the more you exactly. discover the different things. Exactly. Like there are some things that I just discovered about my phone like recently that exactly. I didn't know that I could do them. So I think like it's like an unveiling. Yeah. Like a daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um Busai, I want to ask you what do you how do you think okay so i'm hearing you guys talk about purpose you know god created us for this you know we're destined for this mm -hmm. and all of that and i'm just here i'm watching and i'm like all these people are just talking all these things <laughs> i mean how do i know how do i discover my purpose how do i know that okay this is what i'm supposed to do like is it just something that i wake up and feel like oh i'm supposed to be doing so is there something that tells me or is there like how do i know how do i discover uh, my purpose well in answering that i'd like to go back to the basics i like to see god as very simple and you know they're just usually simple foundational things that then you can build on so i'll say the simple things of you know hearing god you know um reading God's word, praying and all of that. I think those are the foundations to 
you know, living a life of purpose. So, I, I, for anyone who's asking the question, how do I find my purpose? I think it starts with the simple things of the foundational things. They might look irrelevant and simple, but if you create a lifestyle around it, I think it's easier to work in your purpose. Because in the end, the, the whole idea of purpose is to understand what God's will is for your life part time and then acting it out. So, how do I understand it? Yes, yeah, so what I are think the foundational things that you're yeah, talking so, about. Yes, <laughs> um, so what, what I what I tell people when 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 they ask this question is that um, you have to get familiar with God. You know, it's easier to trust. How do I get familiar with God? Yes, yeah, so it's <laughs> <laughs> it's again it's back to the basic piece of um, what are the basic things? First, I'll say of course reading the word. Um, I think the word of God is the mind of God, you know, in written form and. The more familiar you are with the Word of God and how God thinks and what God thinks about things, it's easier for you to walk in in, in this, in this well, plans for your life. Yeah. So you have to first create a lifestyle of understanding what God's priorities are. Yeah. So you don't start to create a lifestyle that is completely out of His view for your life. So the more you understand God's priorities, what He thinks about situations, what He thinks about ideas and all of that, begin to you know, understand better how to work in this plan for your okay, life. So spending time. Yeah, absolutely. Work God and yes. all that. All right. Um, I, okay. I think I'd, I'd like to, you know, add, add something to, to that, right? I feel like um, God puts his intentions in us. Uh -huh. The truth is that, you know, if you are saved, you have God's spirit in you. And as Messiah has said, by spending time, you tend to, it's almost as though those things in you begin to wake up. Uh -huh. Sometimes it might not even be in a spiritual experience. Wait. Yeah. If you read the Bible, I like to read, you know, Old Testament stories, right? You realize that sometimes people will just decide, we can do this, you know, or I can do, I can do something about it, and they decide to go ahead and do it. And they realize that they have God's backing, yeah. you know. At some times, you find that people go back and ask God, oh, should we go ahead to do this? Should I try this? Yeah. You know, so it's about, you know, the theme of this is living out loud. It's not about, you know, sitting in one place and saying, oh, God is going to reveal mm -hmm. my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. It's about taking steps, you know, the things that come to your heart, do something about it. You know, if it, as, you, as you spend time with God, and you see that there's a problem that really burdens your heart, I kind of feel like that's, an, that's a sign for things that you can make a difference about. And in doing those things, you're already leaving out your purpose. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go into um, purpose and profession. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I hear a lot of people say, this purpose thing here, ah, in fact, let me know, like, has stressed me before. <laughs> like, and I know that a lot of people that are also watching are like, ah, they are in the same shoes, yeah? So, <laughs> does it mean that my purpose and whatever career, whatever profession I want to do, or whatever profession I'm going into, have to align? So, say, uh, I feel like I like to make people laugh. Does it mean that I have to be a comedian? Or I feel like, oh, I like to help people. I like to save people. I like to do this. Does it mean that I have to be a medical doctor? Mm. So does my purpose and my profession yeah. have to align? Or I can do what I want to do and still work in purpose in another way? Mm. Uh, well, I mean, purpose is every day, really. It's the bits. Like, it's the entirety of it is the little things that you do. And I feel like it's one day at a time. Um, again, back to what I said, if you follow God, if you listen up for Him, I like to say it this way, if you follow God for all of your life, at the end of it, you would have moved to your purpose. And that's pretty much it. So it's really about following God part time. There are times where God will want you to be in a, a certain field, just maybe you can learn something or be, you know, be, be valuable in that in that sphere of influence or anything. So there are different ways God could lead you. It's like, you know, different parts, but in the end, the summation of it will be that you have lived out your purpose. So I'll just say, I know people sweat a lot about, you know, what they are doing right now, if it's connected. I think it's an of course reading of grace, really. Like anything with God, you just let it flow out. Don't, don't try to, I think when we try to do too much, we miss, you know, miss out on what God is doing. So just let it flow. You know, at every point in time, ensure that your heart is in the right place. Ensure that you're always responsive to God. And even if you're doing what you feel like you're not, you, sh you shouldn't be doing right now. If God ever says, you know, stand and move, be so detached so that you can move at any time. So I think it's just living in a way that you're responsive to God, whatever it is, whatever it wants you to do. 
About this career and ministry field, is it possible for you to do career ministry and still live your best life? Absolutely, but then it depends on how you look at it. Right, so I think that in having this conversation, it's important that you know people don't feel like they are boxed, don't feel like this is career, this is ministry, this is, you know, everything is intertwined, right? You know, God just wants you to daily be aligned with Him. And it means that in the 24 hours that you have for each day, you just do what you feel is right. Don't feel like you have to separate them. So your work can be your ministry. Being on the pulpit can be a ministry. Um, you know, doing something, you know, for your community can be your ministry. Um, we have people filming us now. That could be their own ministry. There are no strict boxes around this thing, right? So, for instance, for me, I, I know that one of the things that I'm very, very passionate about is I don't like poverty. And I feel like when I look around me... <laughs> no, no, no. Not like that, right? Not like that, right? But when I look around me, when I... I as in, one of the things that burdens me a lot is what hap what where we are in nigeria where we are in africa with the kind of resources that we have and through my job you know through my profession in this instance <laughs> right <laughs> through, through my profession i i my work revolves around finding strategies developing policies developing things that can <laughs> okay, I, I work with a financial institution, right? And part of my work is around business strategy, innovation, and the work focuses particularly on impact on the bottom, you know, the bottom of the society, basically, right? It's possible for you to do business and still make an impact, right? And the work I do, for me, I see it as ministry because I feel like God wants the best for people. You see people who are, whether they are Christians or Muslims, they are poor. And through my work, I feel like that is part of my ministry. But then that's not the only thing I do. There are other projects I do in church, outside of church. You know, all of those things for me are ministry, even though they form part of career as well. So it's all intertwined. Of the day, it's all intertwined. Don't try to separate it. Your purpose, career, profession, ministry, everything is intertwined. And the only way you can get a proper revelation, like a full revelation of whatever it is that God really wants for you, is by spending time in His Word. And you know, sometimes it's not that serious. You can live your best life, you know, live your best life, have fun. Sometimes it comes to you as a whisper, sometimes it comes to you as a nerd, sometimes it comes to you as anything. But whatever it is that you are feeling, just do it. And and trust God to take it through the process. I'm sure that you guys had fun. Did you have fun? I, I feel like we did not do something fun. Let's, let's just do this. Let's do this before we go. <laughs> let's stre stretch our hands before we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying with us till yeah. the very end. My name is Ebo Nuadusumu and the Wande And that was the news at 10. <laughs> Thank you so much.